Hi everyone, and welcome to the start of our Advent series. Advent is a time of preparation and waiting for the birth of Jesus. What a beautiful privilege it is to start us off in our Advent series. And to do so, I've named the sermon, Your God Reigns. But before I kick us off, I'm going to be building on what we've been working through in the last couple of months. You'll remember that we've been going through a couple of series of the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God, starting with where we confirm that the kingdom of God is where what God wants done is done. We also learned that Jesus is our way into the kingdom. He is the treasure in the field that when found changes everything. One key teaching that's been echoed through all the series has been to live in the kingdom. We need to be mindful of our thinking and think deeply on the word as we work through it. This is a habit I'd like to build on in today's series as we work through it to try and understand what was meant with your God reigns. And how even today we can proclaim your God reigns. So let's dive in, shall we? Please read with me Isaiah 52, verse 7 to 10. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your watchmen lift up their voices. Together they shout for joy when the Lord returns to Zion. They will see with their own eyes. Burst into songs of joy together, you ruins of Jerusalem. The Lord will lay bare his holy arm in the sight of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth will see the salvation of our God. Now, when I read this for the first time, I had a warm, fuzzy feeling or an excitement that was building up. And I realized that as part of my thinking about my thinking and being mindful, that there was a reason for this. And that's kind of a build on of what Sean's been trying to teach us. So when, and you know, what is causing that? And when I looked, it was verse seven that created this excitement. So that was how beautiful on mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, and who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. Now, being an accounting nerd, I broke this up into two concepts that I needed to better understand. One, feet running with a message of good news. And two, your God reigns. Why are they shouting this? And how can they? Can I? Can you? Before I dive into these points, I want to paint you a picture of where we are in the Bible and the context under which these are being written. See, so Isaiah was a prophet in the time where the Israelites were under exile and Babylonian rule. In that time, God had turned away from his people. And this was explained in Ezekiel 10, 18, where it said that God's glory departed. And within Isaiah, leading up to this chapter, he describes God's people as hopeless, strayed, and even likens them to a prostitute living in exile from God. In Isaiah 40, 49 to 55, we see that it was sin that separated God's people from him. But in this verse, there's a change in this chapter, sorry, there's a change where Isaiah speaks of a return from exile, a message of good news, of hope. God had a plan that was being brought into context to the people in this verse, in this chapter. And this is what we're going to dig in deeper to understand. The messenger with good news. Isaiah uses a picture of feet bringing good news on the mountains. Now, in that time, there was no cell phone or telegraphs or even smoke signals. So the way messages were brought in a time of battle was through messengers, feet running. We, you know, it's similar to the movie 1917, where you had that soldier running through the trenches with a message that they should not go into battle because it was going to be there was going to be an ambush. Similarly, in 2 Samuel 18.26 and Nahum 1.15, there was good news brought by feet, by a messenger. But Isaiah was not referring here to getting a message during battle, but it was a message of good news, that God's people were returning from exile. 
that God had a plan to reunite them. And it was nothing they had to do. It was his plan that was coming to fruition. To better understand the magnitude of this good news, let's think of it in two ways. The first being, if we think of today, good news would be the likes of an RTE news alert popping up saying that they have found a vaccine for COVID-19 that is 100% effective and freely available from tomorrow. That would be huge news. To better understand how big the news is in this verse, I look to the Hebrew, which is Tob, which was used for the first time in Genesis 1 verse 4, where God was evaluating creation after he created light. And it said, God saw that the light was good and he separated the light from the darkness. So in the first sentence, we are expectant because the, the good news that is being spoken of, the good news that is coming is so awesome and as powerful as creation of light. The light that we see very little of in the Northern Hemisphere at the moment. Paul talks of this same good news in Romans 10:15 where he calls it good news of the gospel. So Paul equates the good news to the gospel, to that one upon whom they call, as it says in verse 13, good news of Jesus. Luke 2.10 uses the translation of good news when the angel says to the shepherds, do not be afraid, I am bringing you good news that will be a great joy to all the people a savior. That is good news. And again in Acts 10 verse 36, when Paul says, you know the message God sends to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. Hmm. So if I take a step back, we can see a picture forming here. There is light and dark or darkness. Often when we speak of sin or think of sin, we associate it with darkness. I want to take it a step further here and say that there is a divide between the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. Similar to a series Sean preached on a while back, where in the kingdom of darkness, we live under the rule of the law, guilted by our sin and separated from God. And that is contrasted with living in the kingdom of light through Jesus, who has reconciled us with the Father through his sacrifice. So the good news that Isaiah is speaking of is, a, is the messenger bringing good news of people living outside of the kingdom, but prophesying of when they would live in the kingdom of the light. And the reason for that is through Jesus. Jesus, who is coming and has come to bring peace, good tidings, and most importantly, salvation. In Isaiah 9, Isaiah foreshadows the coming of the Messiah when he says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government is on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Paul touches this on Ephesians 2, verse 14 to 18, where he says to, of Jesus, For he himself is our peace, who has made two groups one and destroyed the barrier, reconciling both them to God through the cross, both being Jew and Gentile. But that is a sermon on its own. For here we're, we're focusing on the part where Jesus reconciles us to the Father. Isaiah, as a prophet, was prophesying of what was to come to a hopeless and lost people. A prophecy that Jesus was coming and his coming was going to bring those hopeless lost people peace and good tidings. And how? Through salvation. Redemption. These feet were coming over the mountains to declare and proclaim that Israel was going to be redeemed from a life separated from God. Just like us today, we can too be redeemed in the very same way. Redeem in Hebrew is gal, which meant and was related to a custom where a person was redeemed or repurchased or there was a settling or freeing 
of a person by avenging and repaying what was lost or taken from them. This was normally done by a close family member who was in a better position. And in here in scripture, we're seeing the likeness that he's creating by using this word redeem. So it was a close family member. And in our scripture, this would be Jesus who was coming to buy back the people, to redeem them from oppression, to redeem them from exile. And, and this is his plan. So he was going to redeem his people. To bring it full circle, let's go back to our illustration. We start with God's chosen people, Israel, who worshipped him in Jerusalem. But sin had caused God to turn away from them. Just like today, sin and the uncertainty of darkness of life in a pandemic can create a divide between us and God. But here in verse 7, we see verse 18, For through him we both have access to the Father through one spirit, both Jew and Gentile, all of us. And as it says in Galatians 4, verse 4 to 6, But when the times set had come fully, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption of sonship. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. We get to live in the kingdom, the kingdom of life, under the reign of Jesus. Imagine being told there is a COVID vaccine and it is available tomorrow to everyone. Think how that, how you would respond to that good news. Then think of the Israelites in Babylon who are in exile, who are captive, and they're being told, you're going to be set free. You're going to be able to go home because your God reigns. If you are one of those people about to be redeemed or brought back or taken out of captivity, that would be amazing news. It would be such good news. Someone is coming or has come to redeem you. Reigns in that time would be associated with a king ruling, but this is just as relevant now as it was then because Isaiah was not talking of a human king ruling, but of our God, which we see and have seen him foreshadowing as Jesus. Isaiah is saying that Jesus is the king who reigns then and who will reign and does reign now. He is the same God who was as powerful enough to deliver his Israelites, and he is just as powerful to deliver us now. Think about that for a minute. We're fortunate to live in a time after the fulfillment of this prophecy. We get to know Jesus and what he has done for us, won for us. Having considered all of this information, can you understand why the messenger could shout to Zion, to the followers of Jesus, to, to us, your God reigns. Because even in a dark world that may seem destroyed by a pandemic, acts of terrorism, a world where fear seems to overwhelm more than love, God never leaves us. He had a plan then and he has a plan now. He is declaring the same message can you hear the messenger's feet running? Declaring to you the good news, good tidings, proclaiming peace, salvation, because your God reigns. Isaiah tells the people living in captivity, the Lord will lay bare his holy arm. He is strong. He is able to rescue them. And you know that the Lord has lost none of his strength since then. His arm is still as strong and able to rescue us now. Dublin Vineyard, your God reigns. Your God has and can redeem you. But maybe you are sitting there and you don't understand. Neither have you experienced the redeeming love or freedom that comes from knowing Jesus. God is here telling you that he knows you. He sees you. He wants to step in and redeem you if you would allow him. 
if you would only accept him today. He is the one who can make sense out of life. He is the one by your side when it feels like the whole world has forgotten you. Who can heal your woundedness and your brokenness. Who is the one who can forgive you. He is the one who can take from you whatever burdens your heart and soul. He is the one who can carry you when you come to the end of your rope. He is the one that can bring you into a whole new life. Or maybe you have, but you've allowed sin to create a divide between you and God. God is here saying today that there is no divide big enough to separate you from him. If only you would turn back to him now. Your God reigns. His redeeming arm has lost none of its strength. He comes to you even now, right where you are, knocking at the door of your heart. Or maybe you've just been weighed down by the heaviness of COVID, locked down in the uncertainty of the times. God is here to remind you of his power, his plan. He is in control. Just like he was in the time of Isaiah, as it says in Romans 8, 28, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Your God reigns in COVID. Your God reigns full stop. You can place these circumstances into his hands and rest. Jesus has been given authority over everything. You can rest in that knowledge. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. You are covered by the Lamb. You are redeemed. To close, I'd like to invite us all to read verse 7 together as an act of celebration, an act of worship, an act of declaration of the truth. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns.